Okay, so also you came over this last weekend. You watched the UFC, Mm -hmm. which was an exciting adventure. I know. I still maintain that the Ferguson Pettis fight was good. I mean, it was until he broke his hand. And they had to call the fight. Yeah, that really sucked. But the big, obviously, the big news is the Conor McGregor Khabib melee after the fight. Yeah. I mean, I I don't know about you, but you and I both wanted, we were team Khabib all the way. Yeah. And, um... And then how he leapt out of the cage at the end after he won and started. Yeah, really? Attacking. He was like an animal. You know, I was thinking about that. And I'm like, you know, this is a man who's been putting up with the abuse for mm-hmm. over a year. This McGregor thing for over a year. His he and his team have been saying some really shitty things about him and his religion and his father and his brother. And I get it because finally championed the smart mouth. And then, right. and then he just went primal and was like, I have finally done it. And then you just kind of, I think you just kind of go insane. And you're like, I want to take care of all of you now. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. It's that fight or flight mode, you know? I just, just think like- he had a lot of rage and a lot of adrenaline and he was, he felt unstoppable. Yeah. And it's funny because everybody's like, oh, it was so disgusting. How sad, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I know. Why do they keep using the word disgusting? I don't like, know. There's nothing disgusting about it. He didn't he even hit him. Cage. No. And that's why everyone keeps saying he should be suspended for life and paid $2 million. I'm like, for what? I'm like, what he did didn't he do? even hit the guy. He hit nobody. He got out of the cage. He, he flailed around. He I think the adrenaline and the winning and finally championing somebody who'd been speaking so poorly about him, Mm -hmm. he did it. And I just think, and I was like, I told you, I said, I kind of relate, man. If somebody was talking crap and I I was forced to stay professional and they were saying bad things about my family, which to me is just the lowest blow ever. It's true. I, if somebody was talking shit like that about my sisters and then I finally championed it, I would be like, You better go running because hell is coming for you. I would be seriously. And it was funny because Dana White said, he goes, this was like, this is like some street thug shit. Like these two camps hate each other. Well, I mean, it's been that way. Connor started it by throwing a freaking metal guardrail. Yes. Bus window. Yes. I agree. He's and, and I'm like, does this the, the fact that he lost? Can we like kind of put to bread that he's no longer unstoppable, unbeatable? You know, the, the the man, the man of everything. I mean, can we like can we maybe let that die a little? I mean, I don't have a problem with this shit talking, really, because that's what people pay. That's why they buy tickets. You know, they want to hear yeah. it. They want to see it. I get it. The problem is now. Like, I was listening to the Joe Rogan podcast earlier today, and there was a guy who was there, and they were talking about it, and he said, it is no different, like, I, and I have been to rock concerts where big fights break out. Mm-hmm. It's very scary. It is really, imagine. really scary, because it just, it just steamrolls into one big thing. Even if you have nothing to do with it, you might get punched in the face by somebody who's just getting a little too hyped. And this was kind of the same thing. Apparently, he goes, what was really scary is it was fine in the arena. But when they told us we had to leave, that's when it was scary. He's like, the the closer we got to the exit of the arena, the more violent it was. He's like, by the time we got out of the actual arena by the bathrooms, there were brawls everywhere. Everywhere. People were fighting. Could be Irish, whatever. And so, first of all, you would have to literally throw me out of that arena. I would not leave yet. Oh, I'd be sitting at the top row. (laughs) I would be like, nope, I will wait until you shut off the lights. And then I would get myself to my hotel room as quickly as possible. I would sneak out. You're right. Yeah. Well, they showed a video, like, just as things started to happen. Yeah. Um, Connor McGregor's wife, she had the baby with (gasps) her. No. And That's so dangerous. They had the hand because she was like right in the front row with and the baby. So oh no! There was at least six security guards that are just like, "You need to go, 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 go." And she was like trying to walk as fast as she could in heels, holding the baby. <sighs> and I'm just like, "God, oh, talk about being in the wrong place." You know, that's so funny. I was when we were watching that go down. I was sitting there thinking, "I wonder if she's in a suite somewhere high." I thought I re- read before that she doesn't watch the fights in the arena. Because but I could be wrong. Well, if she was there, 
for whatever reason. I mean, why not? I mean, she's always there. It's just a matter of where she watches it. But I was like, she has a baby who's barely a year old. I would think she's in a suite where it's a little bit quieter. But, you know, the front rows, are sur- you're surrounded by millionaires. I mean, you're not surrounded by anyone who's going to give you crap. Right. Really, if you think it's all celebrities and fighters and promoters and all that stuff. So you're pretty safe in the front row. I mean, apparently that when he leapt out of the ring, that was over by the announcers and stuff, which is probably where she was. That is terrifying. Um, <laughs> I mean, can you imagine if you is. saw that giant human being leap out? Did you see the picture of Drake? What was he doing? No. Well, he's a friend of Conor McGregor's. And so he yeah. was in the front row, of course. Well... So there's a picture of him beforehand where he's like kind of smiling and screaming because, you know, it was getting really exciting at the end. And then when he tapped and (laughs) Khabib jumps on top and he's getting ready and he leaps off, Blake looks up like like a rock is getting ready to land on him. He's got this look of fear on his face. And it's almost like, I have chosen poorly. (laughs) Yeah. I'm trying to think. He almost looked like an alien or something that emerged yeah. from the octagon. It was scary. It was very scary. And I'm like, I wouldn't fuck with him <laughs> in a million years. In fact, Joe Rogan, they're like, well, what what, what technique would you use if you had to combat with Khabib? He's like, running. Running away. <laughs> He's ridiculous. They, there's a video of him wrestling a bear in Russia. A bear. <sighs> an actual bear. Wow. That's biting him and stuff. And I'm like... The dude is someone that he, I mean, I, I don't know who, what it's going to take to to best him. There's always somebody. But right now there isn't. <laughs> so I'm like, okay. He's tough. Oh, he no. is tough. And I just thought it was ironic that he got, he had to tap out by rear naked choke again. Again. Same thing Diaz did. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which he said would never happen again. He said he never he said it's the most emasculating feeling in the world. I'm like, well, even more so. <laughs> uh Daryl and I were talking about that a month because he didn't he didn't choke him out. I mean he did, but his his arm was on his chin. And his chin was actually down. Yeah. Like, under the arm. But but uh we were Daryl was explaining to me and also the Joe Rogan show explained it to me that when you he goes, everybody's saying he goes, whether it's a that it wasn't officially a rear naked choke. He goes, listen, just because it wasn't under his neck or under his chin doesn't mean that it wasn't. He goes, not only did he have his head in a wrench, he's like, he had his legs crossed behind him and he was putting his full weight on his back. He wasn't going anywhere and and he Mm. knew it. So that's why he tapped. He couldn't get out of it. He was like completely locked in. And I'm like, well, I mean, it's better than almost passing out. But because he knew that he was in a position that he couldn't get out of, it was over. But he he's ridiculous. He is a ridiculous wrestler. It's mm-hmm. been unbelievable to watch. I I was pleased with the fight. Obviously, I did not want McGregor to win. He got a couple good punches in, but overall, I think he got his ass kicked. He's got to work on his ground game. And, uh, yeah. you know, he's, he's had a long time to focus on that, but yeah. he just relies on that left hand a lot. Yeah, and well, Khabib can take a punch, and that, I think he figured that out at the first round. He knew he was screwed. That's what I think. Yeah. That's, I think he got a couple good kicks in. He got a couple real good punches in the first two rounds. And after that, he was fucked. Yeah. So. Well, especially with the takedowns. And he thought that that would wear him down. Yeah. yeah but it did. after he was done, he got up and he kind of just like, you know. Let's go. Kinked his head back and forth a little bit. And he's like, all right. I'm yeah. Gonna get some water. <laughs> you know what, though? Hell hath no fury like a man who's on a mission. You know. Oh God! I was just surprised he was playing it legal. Connor was. Connor cheated and yeah. still lost. Yeah. So uh, there's your hero, McGregor. I just don't. You know, it's like I I would have more respect if he didn't cheat. But it's just you know you need to go away now. He you you've been outgamed more than once now. And the fact is, I lost a lot of respect for him when Nick Diaz got him. So or yeah. Nate, Nate Diaz. Nate Diaz, right? Nate Diaz. Nate Diaz. Yeah, because he they found his soft spot. They found his vulnerability, and after that, everybody knew it, and it was over. Yeah. Anyway, enough of that. It was a great fight, and I'm so glad you stayed to watch it with us. It was super fun, super duper fun.